married, apprehensive, it's probably because you've just married Jacob. <laughs> It's a great honour that Jamie asked me to be his best man. He actually asked me in a caravan in the Bracken Beacons of all the places. And I was completely lost for words. But then, after accepting, he presented me with a file. With all the things I must not mention. I actually have that file. mention anything in it, but I will leave it in the bar area. <laughs> May I say, chapter 82 is a very interesting <laughs> But in all honesty, um, I was a little bit nervous about doing this speech, uh, so I prepared a few lines, and now that I've snorted them, I'm going to say a few more of them. for the best part of 20 years, right back from primary school. I can honestly say I've not once witnessed him happier than I have seen him today. Time and off for this most beautiful one. I actually find lots of ready to make speeches on the internet, but um, sadly none of them are about Rose and Jane. <laughs> It's to me after all. When Jamie told me he proposed to his long-term girlfriend, I said, oh, great news. Because, you know, these are difficult things to time. You know, when is the right time to pop the question? I said, did you get the response you wanted? He said, well, Matt, she was absolutely furious. <laughs> I said, why? He said, well, she believed he had yet again made a decision without consulting her <laughs> I must say I had the pleasure of visiting Jamie and Rose in Manchester, I think it was autumn 2010. It was a real insight into their relationship, actually. Now, for those of you who don't know, Jamie is at his best in the kitchen or sorting out the administration, the more effeminate it rocks. <laughs> So Paul Rose has been left with the task of DIY, changing light bulbs, and all the more hands-on hard and But I think in all seriousness, it's right that uh, Rose rules the roost. And she is the one happy to wear the trousers in the relationship. In fact, it was so true in that relationship, I was a little shocked that Jamie, but that Rose, sorry, was at the altar today, waiting for Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to stand here today and tell you a hundred laddish stories about how me and Jamie got completely drunk, got in all kinds of mischief, but if I did that, I'd be lying. <laughs> My friendship with Jamie is not like that in the slightest. In fact, I don't think we could be further away from your stereotypical lads. For example, a clan of us actually went to Magaluf, believe it or not, when we were 18. Thank you, Ross. We were the only other lads around getting drunk. Me, Jamie, Andrew Probert, and Hugh Watkins were staying in the hotel room playing pranks on each other. <laughs> I'll run you through one of these. We researched on the internet before we went to Magaluf that apparently, if you dunk someone's hand into warm water while they're asleep, it causes some sort of bizarre reaction in the human body which causes one to urinate in their sleep. So, we wanted to find out if this was true. And unfortunately for Jamie, he was the one who fell asleep. <laughs> So we went to get the warm water, returned to Jamie's bedside, Hugh got Jamie's hand, slipped it out under the covers, all of us really trying not to laugh. His hand slips into the warm water. I can tell you now that you've done this uh, prank 
was a complete failure. Jamie's hand got in about three centimetres around the water and came out at about 100 miles an hour, resulting in me, Hugh, Andrew Probert running out of the room, screaming at the top of our voices as we barricaded the door because we had Jamie running at us and he was livid. <laughs> Of course, this prank actually resulted in Jamie being one of, in one of the most dreadful moves for the rest of the holiday. In fact, how he got his revenge on us is featured in chapter 62 of the Forbidden Fire, which I'm not allowed to talk about. <laughs> Jimmy and I were very much into our drama, our drama and acting when growing up. Uh, we both starred as T-Bows in our local production of Greece. But I really feel it must be said that Jamie's acting capabilities really do end that and weigh that of his singing capabilities, <laughs> which is contrary to the lady we married today who's nothing short of a professional. <laughs> As for the acting, though, I'm sure many of you are aware of the films <laughs> me, Jamie, and a few of our friends made. Uh, some, some of them have embarrassingly found their way onto YouTube. Now, the thing with these films, well, Jamie took them very seriously. <laughs> we had scripts, we had locations to be at certain times, boom microphones, lighting rigs, etc. Love. Much to Jamie's frustration, most of us actors just laugh our way through the scenes. And poor Jamie had the horrific task of editing out all the hours and hours of endless footage. I don't forget the time we were filming a scene involving gunfire with the devil in Compromise. <laughs> got a replica guns from our friend James Carr, who's with us today. So these are realistic, very realistic replica guns. And during the filming, a dear old lady approached us to put in a complaint, because all she could see from her house was two vehicles circling the estate with machine guns, <laughs> pointed out of the car window, pointed at Jamie, dressed as the devil. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, none of us knew what to say to this lady who clearly wasn't happy. So we all agreed that the best thing to do would be to send Jamie out to discuss the matter for a while. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can honestly say I've never seen such a surreal moment witnessing Jamie dressed as the devil trying to liaise with this dear old pensioner. <laughs> I think you said something else about us being from the BBC or something. <laughs> I'd like to take you back to the time when Jamie first introduced me to Rose. He presented a young lady in long leather boots from ankle length to upper thigh. <laughs> she had spikes on her jacket and bright blue hair. Now I'll be honest with you. I was actually quite terrified. <laughs> <laughs> then, after a few hours passed, I built up enough courage to engage in conversation with her. And I became such an eloquent voice. And to my surprise, we spent the rest of the day debating the sociological impact of Gordon Brown stepping down as Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> a word of advice, ladies and gentlemen, never get into a political debate with Rose, unless, of course, you're comfortable with defeat. <laughs> Rose is a very clever, witty young lady with a great sense of humour. After all, she married Jamie. <laughs> I'd like to thank the bridesmaids today, Susie and Holly Stone. I'd also personally like to thank Rachel Richardson, the maid of honour. In all seriousness, I feel it's a great honour and privilege that Jamie made me his best man today. And although I've cracked many wise jokes about him in his speech, I think you'd be hard pushed to find a better friend, a loyal friend, a friend who's not just there in the good times, but the rough ones as well. 
Maybe it's kind of wife who is not just beautiful, but an intelligent and deeply caring person that I know will make him a very happy and proud man. I sincerely wish you every success in your marriage together. Ladies and gentlemen, for the final time, will you please stand and raise your glass with me to the newlyweds, Jamie and Rose. Thank you very much.